Here we're given matrix A, which is a two by two matrix, and we're asked to find the eigenvalues of A, and then find a corresponding eigenvector for each lambda that is a unit vector. So to find the eigenvalues of a square matrix A, we want to find the scalars lambda that satisfy this equation here, where we have the determinant of the difference of lambda I minus A equals zero, and then to find the eigenvectors of A corresponding to each lambda, we need to find the solutions to this equation here. So I've already set up the equation we use to find the eigenvalues, where we have the determinant of, again, lambda I would be lambda times the two by two identity matrix, which is this matrix here, and then we have minus matrix A equals zero. Performing the matrix subtraction, we have lambda minus one, zero minus negative three halves, which is positive three halves, zero minus one half, which is negative one half, and lambda minus negative one, which is lambda plus one. Now the determinant is equal to this product minus this product. So in this case, we'd have the quantity lambda minus one times the quantity lambda plus one minus three halves times negative one half equals zero. Multiplying this out here, we have lambda squared plus lambda minus lambda, that's zero, and then minus one, and this becomes plus three-fourths equals zero. Well, negative one plus three-fourths is negative one-fourth, so we have lambda squared minus one-fourth equals zero. This does factor, but we can also add one-fourth to both sides to get lambda squared equals positive one-fourth, and now we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation, but we are going to have two solutions here. We'll have lambda equals plus or minus one-half. The square root of one-fourth is one-half. So let's go ahead and say lambda sub one equals negative one-half, and lambda sub two equals positive one-half. So now that we have the eigenvalues for the given matrix, we'll find the corresponding eigenvectors that are unit vectors. Again, to do this, we'll first find all the eigenvectors by solving this equation here for vector x. Let's do this on the next slide. Let's begin by determining the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative one-half. Again, I've already set up the equation that we use to find the corresponding eigenvectors, which is the difference of lambda i minus a times vector x equals a zero vector. So again, subtracting these two matrices gives us this matrix here. The components of vector x are x sub one, x sub two, and the zero vector is here. So now we substitute negative one half for lambda. So we'd have negative one half minus one, that's negative three halves, three halves. The second row would be negative one half and negative one half plus one is positive one half times vector x equals a zero vector. Now let's write the corresponding augmented matrix and write that in reduced row echelon form to solve for x sub one and x sub two. So the corresponding augmented matrix would have a first row of negative three halves, positive three halves, zero, and the second row of negative one half, positive one half, zero. And now let's get a zero in this position here. Notice that negative three times negative one half would be positive three halves. If we add that to negative three halves, we'd get zero. Let's replace row two with negative three times row two plus row one. Let's get a leading entry of one here by replacing row one with negative two thirds times row one. Replacing the first row with negative two-thirds times row one, we'd have one, negative one, zero, and then negative three times negative one-half is positive three-halves, plus negative three-halves, that's zero. Negative three times one-half is negative three-halves, plus positive three-halves, that's zero, and then we have zero. So as expected, we have a row of zeros, which means you do have an infinite number of eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative one-half. But the first row indicates that x sub one minus x sub two must equal zero. So this also tells us that x sub one 
must equal x sub two. So if we parameterize this relationship in terms of t, we can say the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative one half, vector x equals all the vectors where the x component is t and the y component is also t, which we can also express as t times the vector where the x component is one and the y component is one. But remember the eigenvectors can't be the zero vector, so we should say t can't equal zero. But this doesn't quite answer our question. We do want to find a unit vector corresponding to lambda equals negative one half. So notice how if we let t equal one, we would just have the vector one comma one. So let's say one unit vector corresponding to lambda equals negative one half would be equal to vector x divided by the magnitude of vector x. Again, where t equals one, the vector is just one comma one, and therefore the magnitude would just be the square root of one squared plus one squared, the square root of two. So one unit vector corresponding to lambda equals negative one half would be the vector with an x component of one divided by square root two and a y component of one divided by square root two. Now it's also true we could use a unit vector in the opposite direction. So we could also say the unit vector with an x component of negative one divided by square root two and a y component of negative one divided by square root two. But let's go ahead and use this unit vector here. And now we need to go through this process again for lambda equals positive one half. So for lambda sub two equals positive one half, we would have one half minus one, that's negative one half, three halves, negative one half, and one half plus one is positive three halves, times vector x equals the zero vector. And the corresponding augmented matrix would have a first row of negative one half, positive three halves, zero, and the second row of negative one half, positive three halves, and zero. Notice how these two rows are actually the same. So let's get a row of zeros here by replacing row two with negative one times row two plus row one. Let's get a leading entry of one here by replacing row one with negative two times row one. So the first row is going to be one, and then three halves times negative two is negative three, and we have zero. And again, because row one and row two are the same, negative one times row two plus row one is going to give us a row of zeros. So this first row indicates that x sub one minus three times x sub two must equal zero. We can also say that x sub one equals three times x sub two, which means all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals one half would be the vector x, where if we let x sub two be equal to t, we could say the x component would have to be in the form of three t, and the y component would have to be in the form of t. If we wanted to, we could say t times the vector with an x component of three and a y component of one. Again, where t can't equal zero because the eigenvector can't be the zero vector. But again, we're asked to find a unit vector corresponding to lambda equals one half. So if we let t equal one, we would have the vector three comma one. So again, if the unit vector is equal to vector x divided by its magnitude, let's say when t equals one, The x component would be three divided by the square root of 10 because the magnitude of vector x when t is one would be the square root of three squared plus one squared, the square root of 10, and the y component would be one over the square root of 10. Of course, we could also give the unit vector in the opposite direction. So we could also say the unit vector with the x component of negative three divided by the square root of 10 and a y component of negative one divided by the square root of 10 but it only says give a corresponding eigenvector that is a unit vector. So we'll go ahead and give it in, so we'll go ahead and give the final answer in this form here. So to summarize what we found, we found the eigenvectors of matrix A where lambda equals plus or minus one half. I think I interchanged the subscripts here, but I think you get the idea. 
where the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals one half are in the form t times the vector with an x component of three, a y component of one, where t doesn't equal zero. We can also say the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals one half is given by the span of this vector here, where a unit vector with t equals one would be this unit vector here. And then for the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda equals negative one half, the eigenvectors x would be in this form, again where t doesn't equal zero. We can say the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals negative one half is given by the span of this vector and a unit vector when t equals one is this vector here. Remember for the unit vectors though, we could also give the unit vectors in the opposite direction. I hope you found this helpful.